What kind of shrooms is she doing over there at my take at the lake? Hey, it's care. I'm not doing any kind of shrooms. However, I do have some psychedelic fun prints to show you. This is going to be a thrifty Thursday type video with thrifty tips versus showing you things that I've purchased. I just have some thrifty ideas for you. We'll start with the shrooms. I print a lot. I have a HP, little HP wireless printer, nothing fancy. And it only has two ink cartridges in, black and tricolor. And so they, depending on what I'm printing, they empty differently. And recently I got a printer low on ink message. And I checked to see which one was low and it's the colored one, the tricolor. So I thought, oh, that's a perfect time to do some fun Mm, you never know what you're going to get kind of prints. So I'll show you a picture of what this looks like when it's printed properly. It's all vintage -y. It looks like it's right out of a, a vintage encyclopedia. But printed on low ink, I have no idea what it's going to come out. I don't know because it just says the whole thing is low. It doesn't say low on yellow or low on blue. It just says low. So there's no yellow apparently. <laughs> a lot of red left. A lot of red left. So these are how my mushrooms came out on low print. And the reason I'm bringing you this, by the way, I got this from the Art Scavenger. I believe it was on Pinterest, but you can go to artscavenger.com and see if it's still there. Beautiful stuff. It's all about being thrifty and getting every last bit of ink out of that cartridge as you can before you throw it away. Now I have, oddly enough, a project that at least a couple of these will go in beautifully. And so I took prints that are heavy on the green or heavy on the yellow, heavy on the blue, and printed them out. And it's a crapshoot. You can't really know going in what's going to be the result. And I think that's what makes it fun. So this one is a kit I bought on Etsy. It's real denim -y dark blue and some grays but as as the blue was wearing out it got sort of a burgundy hint to it and then the rest of them I don't know what happens here I don't I don't know maybe it's just getting that last little bit of ink out of there blue ink and now it's burgundy it's beautiful and I didn't have to do anything special to it. I didn't take it to Canva like I often do alter my digikits that I purchase. I did not do that. All I did was print on low color ink. And it gives you a completely different look. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it's like on this round of low printer ink. Now, if I printed a whole bunch of blue, whole bunch of blue, whole bunch of blue, this would turn out a lot differently because there'd be yellow left. I've been printing a lot of vintage lately, so there's no yellow. So you never know what you're going to get. This is supposed to be this color green. I'm sorry, this is part of this kit. And it's, it's pretty close to what it's supposed to be, so I must have printed this one first. And then I started to print that, and then it started to run out, and then I printed that one that's how that happened so there was still a lot of blue left still a lot of blue left and then it ran out of blue and i got this beautiful burgundy so that's what that's supposed to look like this is a beautiful free digit kit that i got uh, i'm one of carrie at mixed media carrie's mixed media arts i'm one of her patreon members and i believe this was a patreon member gift i think it was last winter this is what it's supposed to look like it's, it's beautiful. She's got it all grunged up all ready for us. But because I've been printing so much vintage, there's no yellow left in my print cartridge. And it printed this way instead. Now, I have that plethora of peonies project going on. This is perfect. It's hot pink. Even though they're not peonies, it's okay. I'll let it ride this time. Or it could go in my color glue book in the hot pink area. I could give it to my mom for her pink roses journal. There's all kinds of things that I could do with it, even though it looks completely different than the original. And again, it's just because my ink is low on my printer, my color printer. I love this. So obviously I did these earlier too because these still have quite a bit of blue in them. These beautiful blues 
it's like a periwinkle blue or originally this green they're from this kit so it, because there's no yellow to mix with the blue i'm just getting purples and blues which is beautiful so they're not they're supposed to look like this i don't know if i did any, any of the same ones i thought i did anyway this is close but so much fun they're just such a gorgeous color and it's a color i don't i hope it's coming through on on the screen it's a color that you don't often find it's a difficult color to make it's a difficult color to print it's sort of like a unicorn color you know like you just it's only by accident look at this beautiful purple line that's going down that's supposed to be vintage and brown but again there's no yellow to mix with that blue and purple or that blue and red which is purple to gray that out to neutralize that out and they're so pretty this might warrant its own journal but i only printed these four so that's all i have i'm gonna have to be a tiny little journal unless i can find some other papers that color here's another one i think this is part of the denim kit the bluish one i think but as it's running out it's got that sort of ombre look <laughs> fade to pink good for collages clusters it, it'd make a fine page just just the way it is even with the lines just adds interest it's fine H half blue and half pink page very cool these i can't remember they might be from carrie as well i think from her Etsy shop. I'm not even sure where I got these, but they're supposed to, they're coffee dyed designs and they're gorgeous when they're coffee dyed. But I, these are the ones I ran first to see what would happen. And they're just these beautiful collections of pinks and soft purples. I'll show you a picture here of what they're supposed to look like. Deep, rich coffee dyed. But because my ink is low, there's no yellow. To neutralize these out i got an entirely different look i think there's five or six of these so i could print on the other side i could put my lavender iced coffee on the other side so that it's not just this plain jane bright white although in here is nice and bright white so this could go vintage or it could go bright either way and the last one I did is a grunge thing. I think this is from My Porch Prints. It's fantastic. But it's yellows and browns and creams naturally. But because of the low ink, it's kind of a hot pink. So this is a fun, fun way to add grunge if you're doing something like one of my projects that I have going on is, is a vintage pink. Like uh, the color you get when you... And your avocado dye something so i don't know if that'll go very well now that i've got these things together but it'd be a fun way to introduce grunge into a project without ruining the color scheme if you happen to have one and my printer i don't know why it does this but once in a while it'll only print half a page and leave the other half blank so when i was doing another part of this video i was using my stamps and nothing goes to waste i when I use stamps of any kind, I put it where I want, you know, I ink up the stamp and I put it where I want it, but then I clean the stamp off on a blank piece of paper and then I, I wipe it off on a wet wipe so that it doesn't ever clog up the pretty, yeah, I guess who was at the fun spray spa today? Anyway, I just stamp randomly and it makes for such a nice background, so nothing ever wasted. So that's my, my thrifty tip about when you get that printer low on ink, if you have like I do, a black cartridge and a tricolor cartridge. Have some fun with it. Get every bit of ink out of that cartridge as you can because you've already paid for it. You might as well see what happens. Pick your coffee dyed spray, coffee dyed designs or something that's all blue or all green or all one color and see what happens. Pick out some vintage things and see, see where it leads. I just thought that was fun. I, that tickled my fancy whilst I was cleaning. I'd hit print, let it print for a while, and then come back to cleaning. Got old bed sheets. These aren't actually old. I think my dryer got too hot when it was drying these. Of course, I'm not going to find it now, but it's it, uh, sort of singed. 
melt the plastic. So obviously these are not 100% cotton because cotton sheets wouldn't do that. They're not terribly wrinkled, so you know there's some polyester in there, but I think that's what happened. And that would just be wretched to sleep on, so they're essentially ruined. It's melted. I can't iron that out. It's changed the texture of the sheets. So I could just throw this away. It's a beautiful dove gray sheet. Silvery kind of gray. It's, this is yards of material for free because I'm not going to donate them because no one else would want to sleep on that. So I either throw them away or find another use for them. So I've been hacking away at it because sheets coffee dye beautifully. This I just sprayed with my my instant coffee spray. I just sprayed it. They also stamp really well old bed sheets. So these can be used for tabs, clusters, page edging, bookmarks. Let your imagination run wild with it. So they coffee dye really well. They also fun spray really well. Not sure what happened there, but I fun sprayed it and they came out so pretty even though it's gray silvery it's still pretty vibrant if you don't want it so vibrant you can do the fun sprays and the coffee and get that nice rich dark yummy colors uh, this happens to be a fitted sheet and so i've been taking the elastic out of it and fun spraying that that also coffee sprays really well you can use it for closures you can use this for traveler's notebook style bands there's all kinds of uses for elastic in the junk journal world so there's acres and acres of, of possibilities with this sheet uh, again they bed sheets stamp really well this would be great for a cluster or just a really pretty little piece to add into a simple journal with a little vintage safety pin or a snap you could snap it in there this i made with my little letter stamps you could cover cover a book with it use it as the cover of the journal and stamp away you could fun spray it and then use it as a cover there's so many things to do i i doubled this because it's pretty sheer you know, if you're covering up a cereal box or a cracker box or whatever and you don't want to see that, you've got plenty of material. This is a king size sheet, so I have no problems doubling it. And then you see nothing of the original. So it can be used for covers. It could also be used to, if you're doing um, hardcover and you need something pretty on the inside, this would make a great inside of a book. If you're using hardcover, put it on, on here on these pages or just on the inside of the cover. It's generally when you're making a, a cover you you have the spine and the two covers and so just a pretty piece of material down there and again double it up if you don't want to see but usually there's nothing behind this so you don't have to cover it up but it can be used on the inside as well as the outside of a journal. It would also make really good signature covers instead of a paper signature cover if you have four three four or five signatures in your book in your journal excuse me uh, use these as as uh, signature covers that would be pretty it gives just another layer another texture to enjoy you're playing with your junk journal cut it up into pieces keep it handy i missed i missed some this can be used for a lot of things too for clothes just for embellishments little bows little knots all kinds of things you can do with this there's also i think i said this coffee sprays just like it fun sprays so old bed sheets yes indeed so uh, i had to get a new phone and of course when you get a new phone you have to get accessories and whatnot i had to get a screen protector and the one that i decided to on came in this wooden box isn't this a great little box it's all pressed board box and i just think i don't know it says i should put a little journal of some sort in there because we're coming up on Halloween and it's black, I think it'd make a fun little spooky box of some sort. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But you don't always have to buy stuff is the point of that. You have stuff laying around all the time that can be used in junk journals. This was the my case for my new phone as a wristlet. Well, I have never used it as a wristlet, but it comes with this nice little purple thing. This could be book bling. It could 
you could take it apart and just use the good pieces if you didn't want a purple handle but you know I've got purple projects going on so I could clip this on as part of the embellishments or have it be part of my purple projects somehow or along the way I never throw away coffee around here I just start a fresh pot when it's empty I start a fresh pot and there's always coffee in the morning and whatnot and I have a rule if it's less than half a mug full I put it in this jar so if it's not gonna fill up my cup so I have a full cup of coffee left over from leftover coffee I put it in this jar with a little bit of rubbing alcohol a few ten drops half a teaspoon to keep the mold at bay but at the end of a week because we go through a lot of coffee here, okay. just with the little bits that are left in the pot, I have enough to coffee dye a good chunk of papers. This will probably dye, oh, at least 20, 20, 30, 40 sheets of paper, just putting it in a nine by 13 pan, pouring my coffee on it, squishing it through, and have it, that way you always have coffee dyed paper at, at the ready. Um, when you're doing it that way, you know, squish it, you're not being really fussy about it just squish it through flip it around and what I would do then because because I'm not trying to get a perfect look I just want some messy paper I would take it out I would preheat my oven to 275 300 I once it's preheated I would shut it off and then just put that little stack of paper in the oven close the door and that heat stays in the oven a long long time by the next morning they'll probably be dry so that you have coffee dyed paper that's pretty fast and easy not a whole lot of muss or foss i have been saving these for a year these come from meyer and they're always seasonal or themed this one is fall it's got beautiful fall leaves baking thanksgiving in the summertime it's got fresh fruit and healthy snacks the easter one so spring so i've been saving these i don't quite have a year's worth yet but you can hinge them together or sew them pamphlet stitch style and you've got a ready-made year-round journal that you can just use as a glue book a seasonal glue book or a holiday you know for glue and all the fun little easter stuff you come across or all kinds of things that that you can use this for if you don't want to save them for a year like i have beautiful stuff for the color glue book if you're doing a colors glue book for sure and they're, they're all a little different like this one has all these little hinges in it where all the coupons were you could you could stick stuff in there and, and add pages lots and lots to be done with these and again not buying anything it comes to my house for free thank you meyer and I don't know if I showed these earlier. I know they were on there, but the sheet stamp's really nice. Look here, it's melted. Whoops. And I don't know if you know this, but when you cut sheets, or any cotton blend material really will do this, but you just snip a little bit in the direction you want to go. Just give it a good snip. I get past that melted part, apparently. Give it a good snip, and then tear it. Go the other direction. Give it a tear the other direction give it a tear and that's how you get those nice ruffled edges and like here you can't really see it's not very ruffled you just take a you just take a few of the strands of the of the weave out to get that nice messy edge and then stamp away. So pretty and so simple and easy. Uh, I said stamping, excuse me, fun sprays and stamping and coffee spray. You could also throw watercolor at, at this kind of fabric. You could water down some of your acrylic craft paint. Get that super, super watery and spatter that on the sheets for a pretty pretty pattern to get color into it whatever kind of sheets you have work no matter what color white of course is wonderful because you can do anything with it but this soft dove gray you can do anything with that as well i've been wanting to show you this for a long time and i keep forgetting but it's right here in handy so let's do it so i got this way cool thing from my credit union it's a money bag remember when you used to have cash money and you have to deposit it into the bank at the end of your work day from the video store or wherever you were working uh, but it had their logo on the front of it and i didn't like that so i put acrylic paint i just grabbed a couple fun colors of acrylic paint and 
painted over it, I added a little bit of that fun dragonfly glaze to get that iridescent -y look. And this is just a napkin that I Mod Podged on top. And oh, I like it so much better now. What's in here? A uh, mini glue book that I've been collecting stuff for. Little doggers, little escapes. That's what's in here. My minis. I always know where they are. Pretty cool. And the last thing on my Thrifty Thursday list is... Uh, I, I have mentioned in the last few videos about my... Not my. The community tab on YouTube when you're looking at someone's channel. They have home videos, playlists, shorts, blah blah blah, and then they have community and about at the end. And the community tab is where a lot of people will go on and give you updates or send a joke or give a quick tip or share a few pictures. It's kind of like YouTube's version of Instagram, or they can pull viewers. Like, I'm gonna do, I wanna do a glue book and I wanna do a traveler's notebook. Which would you rather see a video of? And then viewers get to answer the poll or vote on something or whatever. And I was looking at uh, Nicole at Relax Cut Glue's community tab, and she had this 12 pack of Elmer's All Purpose Glue Stick. It says it goes on smooth, acid free, photo safe, and non toxic. Also says that it's perfect. Permanent. Now, Nicole at Relax Cut Glue glues a lot, and she had this posted on her community tab, and she said, quick, it's on sale. It's usually like $24 or something like that, and when she posted it, it was on sale for $12.95 or something, and when I clicked on the link, they had decreased because it was months after she posted it. It was on sale for $8, so I got $12 glue sticks for eight dollars and Nicole swears by it and she does a lot of gluing so I've tried it I've given a couple away and I'm trying it right now in some of my glue books and so far so good um, for glue books I think it would be fine you know for for hardier projects or things that you're gonna sell I would go with a higher end glue but for just playing around this would be fantastic at least it seems so so far and like I said it comes recommended by Nicole at Relax Cut Glue and she knows glue so I tried it but that's the brilliance of the community tab if you have just something quick you can put it out there and say hey right now this glue's on sale for eight bucks you should go grab some so check out the community tab on your favorite youtubers uh, hit the notification bell so that when they post something you'll be notified otherwise you'll miss it i think that is all that i have for you for thrifty thursday uh when your printer is low on ink have some fun with it and see what kind of things you come out now before i did this um all my stuff came out purple it didn't come out pink or blue it came out purple and kind of a greenish which was totally off so you never know what you're gonna get so that's fun check out the community tabs that's another save your coffee and do you know once a week coffee dye some paper and then you always have coffee dyed paper at the ready you don't have to buy stuff for your journals because sometimes it just comes right in the mail to you of course we know junk journals that's what we do have some fun with some bed sheets stamp on them coffee spray them all kinds of cool stuff happy thrifty day after thursday <laughs> Don't forget to go love up your beastlies because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Why take at the lake out for now. <laughs>